Hi, I'm Denise Gierak of the Gierak Law Firm. This is another video in our series on selling your business. In this one, we focus on uh, the use of restrictive covenants um, in your documents. When you sell your business, a buyer wants to uh, make sure that you do not open another new business down the street from your old uh, business and then start uh, you know, selling and competing uh, against using the same customers as you did when you owned the business. After all, you are selling the book of business uh, to uh, this buyer and um, they are entitled to have some protection. Here are some types of restrictive covenants uh, that are um, normally part of the sale agreement. One is a non-competition clause or clauses. Depending on the way these are drawn, these can keep you out of the business that you've been in for two years, sometimes more. Or uh, they can be drafted in a way that you will not be able to call on those particular customers that were yours uh, before the sale. These clauses uh, can be drawn in a way to provide protection to the buyer and allow the seller some uh, latitude to do something uh, different after the closing on the sale. For instance, if the seller wants to open another business in a different field and wants to sell to those same customers, the non-competition clause can be drafted in a way to allow for that. These clauses can be drafted in a broad way, too. That's usually what the buyer's attorney will draft initially. Or these can be drawn narrowly for the particular purpose uh, and protection that the buyer and seller have agreed to. The worst case uh, for both parties is to allow the broad scope type uh, clauses and do nothing. Then later, uh, when you know, the buyer or seller decides to go into another business, they are then in default of these provisions. The buyer uh, wonders if they should uh, go ahead and enforce the covenant. The seller wonders if the buyer will enforce it. Both parties are wondering if uh, they are going to be in court over it and what uh, you know, the court will do to enforce it. They are also wondering how the lawsuit is going to impact their customers or clients. Um, in that situation, it's a lose-lose situation for both parties. Um, and uh, the, both parties should have done something with these clauses prior to that to ensure that they don't lose uh, business. So the next is a non-solicitation clause. And so you've created a great team as a seller. And the seller sometimes, uh, when they're forming a new business, who do they call on? Their great team. So these are designed to keep uh, the great team intact in the buyer's uh, camp, not in your camp as seller, to allow that business continuity. So you can't just call them and uh, you know, ask them to come and work for you while they're already working for this new buyer. So in this case, if you're intending on any of these people coming with you, you better know that in advance so that they're not going to be in default of that provision called non-solicitation. You can end up having some issues where the team member just comes to you directly and says, hey, I, I don't like working for the buyer. Can I come work for you? Well, of course, you should say no and not uh, um, entertain that offer during the period of uh, non-solicitation, which could be, again, two years. So you need to draw things differently if you need to have that. Another clause is confidentiality. The seller is giving confidential information to the buyer regarding customer lists, uh, what they bought, how pricing uh, was done, the company's uh, margins, the financial information, etc in order for the seller to disclose this during the due diligence process to the buyer. The seller at that point required that uh, a non-disclosure agreement be signed by that buyer, which is an NDA. After the sale, the seller may also know how the buyer does their business, how they price, how, what products they have, what are their margins all things that uh, should be con kept confidential. They could be trade secrets that are there concerning how the sausage is made, so to speak. 
These are all normal things in the document. Another is a non-disparagement clause. This type of clause uh, states that the seller will not do anything uh, that will adversely impact the reputation of the buyer, even if true. So the, the type of uh, clause is usually used in an employment agreement setting and not normally in a post-closing employment agreement, but it can be there for the same reason. The bottom line is, if you are a seller, you will need to decide before you do a deal what you are going to be doing for the next two or three years. You need to decide if you're going to need the customer list that you now have or your team members for any new businesses that you are thinking of starting. It is very common for a serial entrepreneur uh, to be starting a new business after you have sold the old one that has different products, different locations uh, that may be sold though to the same customers. Uh, this is re the reality that's really why it's uh, so important to negotiate these terms for you beforehand. If you're contractually, you have to wait for a couple of years or longer to be able to use that customer list, the list may be old and cold at that point and it may not even generate any sales to you. Now, if you're a buyer, uh, you need to be aware that the seller may have other plans after the closing. If you can accommodate the desires without uh, diluting your protections that you need that are contained in this uh, restrictive covenants, then it should uh, not be an issue to redraft the restrictive covenants to uh, show or allow for uh, this change. After all, you may be employing uh, the seller even in the short term who may have to interact with your customers and you want that to go well. So both parties should be looking for a written transaction, something that works for both sides. So the thing to remember is uh, this is not done in a vacuum. You really have to think through the issues so that you both get a win-win scenario in restrictive covenants. Thanks, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.